Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hi fellow mathematicians, this is Mr. Woods. Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. Today we're working on the end of year fifth grade statistics. Just to recap what we've already gone over in previous videos, we went over number sense, algebra and functions, measurement and geometry, and today we're working on statistics. Statistics in math involves gathering information, summarizing it, and deciding what it means. The numbers that result from this work are also called statistics. Many times you might see statistics either displayed as a graph or a table. For number one, here are Edmund's scores on science tests this year. As we can see in this table, he's taken 11 tests and he has a variety of scores. For A, what is his median score? B, what is the mode for all these scores? C, what is the mean of Edmund's first five scores? But what does that all mean? Well, we can take a look at that and we're, we're going to, well, median is the middle number. So whatever the middle number, I'm just going to put in here mid. So I know that mid and then the, this symbol here for number, mid number. So what is the mode for all of these scores? Well, the mode is the most frequent number. And I'm just going to say F, R, E, Q, and then again, number sign. And then what is the mean? Well, the mean is just the average. So I'm just going to put AVE. That's just, that's just a reminder for what I'm looking for. So what is his median score? That's that mid number. So, what can we do? Well, we can look at this and go, well, um, how do we rank these numbers here? So, we have the first one. What's the lowest one? Here we go. We'll start. There's one. Anything greater than that, but the lowest next number. Okay, there's two. Next one up is going to be this 84. There's three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and oh, there it is, eleven. So I know that six is the middle number, so six right here is going to be ninety. So I go ninety. That is my middle number or the median score. What is the mode for all these scores? Well, it's the most frequent number. Well, let's take a look here. So I can say, well, let's see, the most frequent number. This happens one time. 80 is one time, so that's just one. Uh, 85, one. 87 is one. Let's see, I have an 88. Nope, I have 90. There's one for 90. And anything else there? Nope. 91. There's one there. But 91 is also there. So I can do, I'm going to do a double tap on that. There's two. There's another 91. So that's one, two, three. I'm going to add that three over here and here just to separate it. And let's see, 98. No others. That's just a one. And 99. That's just a one. So 91 is definitely my most frequent number within this table. Let's look at C. What is the mean of Edmund's first five scores? So that's going to be the average. So what I'm going to do is let's just say this is my range of scores. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And let's add this up. So 80 plus 87, that's going to be 167. Then I add 91. I just add 100. That's 267 minus 9. It's going to be 258. Adding 84, that's, that could be tough as well. So I'm just going to say 100 minus 16. So 358 minus 16 is going to be 342. And then adding another 100 to that is 442 minus 10. That's going to be 300 or 400, I'm sorry, 432. So I have 432. And I'm taking the average over those first five because I 
add it up, and then I take the average, so it's going to be number that's going to be five here. Can I divide four by five? No. So I'm going to put a zero. That's just a placeholder. Uh, I'm going to have 43 to work with. I know that five times eight is 40. Subtract that, 32. I know that five times six is 30. Now I don't want to have a remainder, so I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to add a decimal point here and here, just as a reminder, and a zero. So I'm going to bring a zero down here. Five times four is equal to 20. So I have a nice number there to track that zero. So 86.4 is the mean or the average of the first five scores. Number two, for Edmonds, marks in science create a histogram for the range of scores 0 to 85, 86 to 91, 92 to 100. Basically it kind of looks like a bar graph. So what I want to do is I want to create this here and I'm going to add my ranges so 0 to 85, so 0 to 85 okay and then I have 86 to 91, 86 to 91 and then I have 92 to 100 so let's take a look here so I'm gonna look at 0 to 85 so here we go this is 1 uh, let's see here there's 85 so here we go less than 80 or 85 or less and there's another score so I have 1 2 3 4 within that first range. Let's look at 86 to 91. So this is 86 to 91, 86 to 91, 86 to 91. That's not there. 86 to 91 and 91. So there's I have one, two, three, four as well. Oh, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five within that range. And then the 92 to 100, that's gonna be three and three. Let's make sure I got all of them there. Yes, I did. So for 0 to 85, I have 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's just do 1, 2, 3, 4. What I can do is draw this here. That's going to be my value for 80, 0 to 85. And then I have 86 to 91. That's my second value. So I have 1, 2, 3, four, five. Oh, I need to put that up a little bit more. I'm going to come right over. There we go. And then I have 92 to 100. So I have one, two, one, two. Now I can number this here just so that people can understand what's going on. And so there is my histogram of data that's distributed between the range of 0 to 85, 86 to 91, and 92 to 100. Number three, in Mr. Segala's class, 21 of 30 children passed the math test. In Ms. Bell's class, 18 of 25 children passed the math test. A, in which class did the higher percentage of students pass? And then B, by how many more percentage points? So what we need to do is we need to find what's the percentage, the, I want to say the average percentage, because it's looking for the class that had a higher percentage of students pass. Okay, And so we have to look at the percentages and such. So 21 of 30. So we have to divide 21 by 30. And we have to divide... 18 by 25. So can 21 be uh, divided by 30? No. So we have to, add, I'm going to add a decimal point here, decimal point there. I'm going to just put a zero there just as a placeholder so I can note and remember that I have that decimal point there as well. So 210, what I can do is go, okay, well, oh, well, 3 times 7 is 21, and then, but if it's 30, which is 
three tens times seven, that's going to give me 210. So I'm going to go right here. That's 210. And I can do zero, zero, zero when I subtract it. So there we go. So I'm going to have seven point zero point seven, and we're going to come to talking about percentages though in a moment here. So again, I cannot divide 18 by 25. So I'm going to put a decimal point there and up here, zero to have my placeholder there. So I know that that's a decimal point. So what's the closest number to 180 that we can get? Well, we can count by 25. So four times tw or four 25s I know is 100. Three 25s is 75. So that's going to be 175. So four plus three is equal to, again, that's going to be seven. And that's going to give me 175. I'm going to subtract that. And again, I have five. I need to add another zero here to bring that down. 50 and two. So there we go. Two times 25 is 50, and that gives me my zeros. But how do we get this into percentage? Find that percent for 0 0.7 is all we need to do is just to multiply that by 100. So 0 0.7 times 100 equals, and I'm going to take this decimal point because I'm moving it two zeros over, so one, two, so that's going to give me 70 percent. Now up here I have 0 0.72, same thing, 0 0.72, I'm going to multiply that by 100, and that's going to equal to 72%. So, who had the highest passing rate? You know, did the highest percentage of students pass? Well, it looks like Ms. Ms. Bell's class had the higher percentage. So, I'm going to say Ms. Bell. And how, by how many more percentage points? Well, 72 minus 70 is going to give me 2%. I'm going to say 2%. Now, in a, if this was an actual test, I would say Ms. Bell's class passed by 2% more. Up here, it would be which, which class did percentage of students pass? Ms. Bell's class had a higher percentage of students pass. I want to be complete sentences and such like that. If you turn this in to me, I might take that off for you if there was some instructions on there where it said, hey, uh, answer in complete sentences or give me a full answer, but I would accept this if I did not have that included. Let's take a look here. But before we start reading the question, I want to look at this, gr this over here. So I have a graph and I have a y-axis and an x-axis. Uh, it shows inches and then shoe size. Let's read the question. Number four. This graph shows the relationship between height and shoe size. Well, height, that's probably referring to the inches. So I'm going to just put a big H there, just as a reminder. And then shoe size, okay. According to the data depicted, what shoe size does a man 71 inches tall wear? Well, we just let's just read this. So we have this height, 71 inches. We come over here, and there is our answer. And I just follow it down, and I find 10. So I'm going to say... 10. Number five, referring to the question above, right here, which comes first in the ordered pairs, height or shoe size? Wow, so remember, if we're looking at a graph, our coordinate plane, this is my y-axis up here, and this is my x-axis over here, and typically it, we write it as x and y. So here, I can put it as shoe size, okay, which is my x-axis right here, and then height, comma, h, or in number of inches. That's it for looking at some statistics for fifth grade. Thank you for watching, and please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Make a great day.